Um, I'm going to start this presentation with a, a film which actually goes on for about five minutes, but I'm just going to show you the first few minutes um, because that's my, my starting point, if you like, and where I'm coming from in terms of how I want to slant this presentation because you'll see with the one PowerPoint diagram that I've got that I could come in on this presentation in many different ways uh, because Constellation Work covers a vast arena and no two people who stand here and talk about Constellation Work will say the same thing and will present it in the same way. And that's also true when you're sitting in a Constellation Workshop or with an individual um, because it's essentially phenomenological. The, the formulaic side of it uh, will not be there generally. Um, and, and I'm a, an advocate for it not becoming formulaic. Um, so this is where I'm going to start from. Now, how do I get from this to a film? Um. Oh, there's the diagram. Oh, never mind, I've got the diagram first. Yeah. Work is that it's also a field phenomenon. 
and that our families are fields. And that there are all kinds of things that have happened in our family field that we probably don't know about, but we're guided through without, realize, without really being able to do a lot about it at the time. And that what constellations do is hone in on that and actually show us the field in front of us. So this is a, a, a quite a controversial uh, process because it's challenging some of the uh, thoughts about individualism. We live in a very individualistic society. We promote uh, autonomy, uh, self-realization, separation from families and all the rest of it. And actually, for me, if we're going to really work with trauma and we're going to uh, bring together, and this, this day is wonderful for this, bring together lots of different disciplines, then we also need to bring in connection to family, soul movements, movements of our soul, and not to be afraid of the word soul, because of course that's also connected to religion and the dogma of religion, and many of us have gone like this uh, with religion. And actually you can include some aspects of that, because most of us have some deep spiritual need, whether we like it or not, to be part of family, community. And if we, don't, if we reject our own family, we'll create our own kind of community. And of course psychotherapy is a community. Uh, trauma is now going to become a community. And what we were just talking about briefly there at the table, and I don't know whether you were also doing this, was to not get fixed in a certain way of being. And of course Gestalt um, has always had this idea of holism, of not fixing things and being constantly moving. But in, the, in practice, once we become part of an association, that's a lot more difficult to do because associations have rules and necessarily standards and all the rest of it. And so how do we stay alive and moving within that process? So there are one or two people who are standing out for me uh, and they've also not had good press. Rupert Sheldrake is one. Uh, he's a cutting edge biologist and he's talking about morphic fields. Uh, and he started on this process by recognising that where he lived there was a, an accident black spot and he traced it back and he discovered that, that on that spot there had been a bloody battle many years before. And so he talks about morphic fields and morphogenetic residents and the, within families this predisposition to repeat stuff over generations. And uh, Anne-Anne Anne Anselie Schutzenberger, who is a French psychotherapist, her book The Ancestor Syndrome gives lots of examples of this. And one of the ones that stayed with me, um, I can just find it because I'm not going in linear fashion with my talk, <laughs> um, was that she, this was a, a, a woman called Jacqueline who came to a therapy group and what she did was, uh, she'd been to, here it is, her ancestors were connected to the Armenian Genocide. And in the therapy group, led by Anne Anseline, Jacqueline wore a neck brace following a car accident which she'd experienced shortly after her child had died in an institution at the age of 13. This child had been mentally and physically disabled following her birth with the umbilical cord around her neck. Jacqueline also recalled the tragedy of her niece, who had been born with a herniated cervical disc. Jacqueline and her sister had both had children born with serious head problems. Jacqueline was a hairdresser, a sister, an anesthesiologist. Both sisters had married on the same day. Both of their parents were hairdressers. The paternal grandmother was a hairdresser. And this paternal grandmother had been born in Armenia and seen her, the severed heads of her two sisters and her own mother being carried past her, impaled on lances. So for three generations, the women had been hairdressers and they'd also had children with serious head problems. So this is a good example of the vertical repetition <coughs> of trauma. And the other interesting thing was the date of the death of Jacqueline's daughter was the 24th of April 1986. The date of the Armenian Genocide was the 24th of April, 1915. So there are also repetitions of dates. And the other person who's done a lot of work on this is Anne Winston Just. 
and she's making a strong case for moving beyond individual psych uh, psychotherapy with clients <coughs> who've been traumatised and actually helping them socially, connecting them to family and community, because often that's where their strength lies. It's not en enough just to have the clinical intervention, but uh, all we also need all these other things around it. So this is again like working holistically. Um, and she's written several books, and um, her book, <coughs> there's the Relative Balance, and what's the other one, A Question of Balance. And the other person is Sarah Payton. Now Sarah Payton is herself a family constellations person, but she's also um, trained in nonviolent communication and is very interested in neuroscience. Uh, and the work of Daniel Siegel, Interpersonal Neurobiology. Now, if I can just bring up this diagram. Oh, there it is. So this is how I brought the whole lot together. And you'll see that I've written constellations and field phenomena around the edge in a dotted line, as well as phenomenology. And for me, <coughs> constellations, field phenomena, phenomenology, run through all of it. And if you can look at that diagram as a hologram, not a 2D image, then you'll get the sense of what I'm trying to talk about. Yeah. So, um, Mark himself was talking about right and left brain there. So, for me, the transgenerational trauma and poor attachment, if you like, come through from behind, yeah, and then all around us is the field phenomena and right brain, one way that Sarah Payton illustrated right brain for me was, <laughs> if you just divide the room in half for a moment, can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah I'll try and talk really loudly. If those of you over here are left brain brain <coughs> people, and if you just reach out and touch the person maybe next to you either side, and you can use your feet as well, <laughs> So if, if I were working with our client, yeah, who's been um, seriously traumatized, what I would initially do probably would be a ritual. Yeah? So I would line up the people who are in his family who have who died or been tortured. Yeah, so there was his father, his grandfather, his mother died just before, after he was here, his brother who was tortured, and I would walk with him along the line, help him to make contact with each individual, and then bow. So this is a soul movement. 
And what we're doing in that is connecting him to these people that he loved and to the people that are, have been tortured, who have suffered, and that he has been removed from and in a way rescued out of. And this builds a bridge for him between where he is now, which is separated in a certain sense from his community, and at the same time deeply and inextricably linked to his community. So it helps him to build a bridge. So that's one safe way to start. So that's one aspect of constellation work, is ritual, to affirm what is and sometimes to offer very simple sentences, which are a statement of what is. Thank you. <laughs> and Mark himself talked about safety. Of course, we have to help this client feel safe. The other thing is to help the client find where his strengths are and his resources are. And I know many examples of people who've left their culture behind and actually their strength is there. Their essential strength is on that soil with those people and with that culture. So if they're out of it, we have to help them to connect somehow and bring the strength of what's there to here. So another aspect of constellation work would be then to set up either one aspect or many aspects of the trauma in front of the person so I would sit with them, and I may do this individually if the client feels not robust enough and, and it would be a negotiation between us. But if he were in a workshop, we would sit with him, decide what was he going to set up. And by set up, I mean, sorry, could I just say something again? <laughs> so he would name, you're my father. And he just walks intuitively with this person in the space. And places them. And then he would take another person. You're my grandfather. <coughs> Etc. So I'll just leave those two for a moment. And then he would sit down. Now in some constellations they go in, but in this constellation he would sit down. And then these people are allowing the field to come through their bodies, through the soma, as Peter Levine calls it here. Yeah? And they're not thinking about the position. Often it helps if they don't know in advance what the experience of these two people was. Because this left brain, right brain process is difficult. You know, the line between the two is very thin. So the less they know about the story, in a way, the easier it is. The more they trust their bodily response and their intuitive response. And they would just allow that to come through them. And it might be that they feel a need to move <coughs> in a certain direction, or they feel a very strong emotion, a sensation. We don't know. And personally, I work with as little language as possible. Because language is left brain. And once you start to speak, the line gets fuzzy again. And it's difficult to stay in your body experience and stay in the right brain experience. For the client, the plus of this way of working is that they see this trauma played out in front of them without having to actually be in the field. So it's less overwhelming. The whole process is shared by the whole group, if it's a group constellation. So the field becomes bigger and therefore can hold more without the personal overwhelm. And of course some people, is that five minutes? Thank you. Some people do become overwhelmed. Uh, and as a representative, if you allow the group to hold it, sometimes another person in the outer circle picks up on it and they would come in to support that process. And we would set up a place for strength, I may set up a place for safety, a place for England, a place for Kurdistan, 
uh, and just for the, the client to have his visceral responses to that and all the time I'm hovering between watching the client's reaction and watching the field and watching the representatives. Thank you. <laughs> So, as I thought would probably happen, I haven't gone through my academic paper in a, a linear left brain way. Uh, I've done what I find easiest, which is to just talk spontaneously. So there's plenty that I haven't said. Um, but I hope, for me, the, the most important thing is that I've touched you with the essence of what constellation work is about. And for me, the essence is that it's a soul process. It's a bodily process. And if we come in too soon, to try and make sense of it, we interfere with the bodily process. So, uh, coming back to Mark, you know, for me, in the constellation, it's not a quick dance from left to right, left to right, left to right. It's essentially <coughs> the right brain process. And then we leave that person's soul to do what it needs to do. Later on, they may make some sense of it with their left brain. But of course, the other thing that happens is because it's a field phenomenon, things happen out there. So I'll give you an example of this. My first constellation was essentially about myself and my mother. But two weeks after my constellation, my ex-husband discovered he had a half-sister. She rang my mother, uh, and she'd had this piece of paper for 12 years with the phone number on of my mother. Uh, and through my mother, she managed to get hold of my husband uh, and she said, I'm here and I'm your half-sister. And it turns out that his mother had given this child away in the war. It was a secret. Nobody knew about it. But it came out after the constellation and that was not my... I wasn't doing anything with my husband's family, but, but it came out as a result of that. And that's just one example. And there are many, many examples of that. that we get into the field, we don't know where the field is going to respond, uh, but it does. And so it's very fact effective from that point of view. So if we're working with our client, we may be working with him as an individual, but actually we're working with the whole field that he's in, which is not just to do with here in England, it's to do with his roots. So I want to finish with, a, again, a very short film, which is what I call the the micro from the macro from the first film uh, and essentially it's because it's a, a soul process again so I started with the soul process and ended with the soul process and hopefully that that's the strongest thing that you take away so how do I get back to this escape line
periods I find of relaxing, soothing water massage to follow their traumatic experience of being born. And birth is traumatic. No matter what kind of birth it is, we're fighting for our life. And if that happened, we may be living in a very different kind of world. Not a world that would be without trauma, not at all. But maybe a world where we could more easily face what comes our way because we've been held by our family and nurtured by our family and community. And thus, uh, thus are more readily able to face whatever difficulties fall before us. Such experience can bring us to a place of grace. Interestingly, this word has the same root as gratitude. Maybe, maybe we can move to, to a place of gratitude, no matter how terrible for everything that has happened to us. And I'm thinking again about my clients.